the contract is a public document um, that can be, can be seen by the entire community. Um, and I was I was wondering also if uh, Patrick Parker has explained in any way, shape, or form the context in which um, this was brought about and not made public for three years and then suddenly appeared when it became relevant to what seems to be uh, something that is of interest to him and a foundation which he is associated to. Only that. And so if there's been any explanation from um, Mr. Parker. If no one else answers. Okay. Well, my understanding of, of Patrick was that uh, we better pass this uh, this uh, mission statement because if we didn't, we would not uh, live up to the requirements of the agreement between the foundation and Shimer. And if we didn't, then uh, we would have failed uh, in a contract. And we essentially entered into a contract to do something. We hadn't done it unless we did pass a statement. And if you don't, if you're a, if you take money from a philanthropic foundation and then do, don't do what they ask you to do, then you could get blackballed. I think that's the word he used. You could get blackballed. Uh, I think that uh, Gail was next. Um, I thought. David, at one point you said you thought you met the criteria of their contract by changing the vision statement. Did you ever receive confirmation from them that that was acceptable? No. Or has there ever been any rumblings to us not meeting the contract? Because three years is kind of a long time. Yeah. I mean, to not hear consistent pressure about it is kind of weird. I'm sorry, the consistent pressure? I mean, if this is such an important cause put into a contract that has three years to keep tapping us on the shoulder going, why haven't you guys done this? I mean, did it leave you with the impression that changing the vision statement was sufficient, or did they ever verify to you that that was sufficient enough? No, they never verified that it was sufficient. Uh, you know, I mean, I Patrick mean, said that he brought it up at previous meetings. I guess I'd have to say, look, I'm in a difficult position with this, but I have to say that Patrick's memories of this and mine are radically different. And our accounts of what happened and what is expected are very different. And I don't want to, I mean, it's very difficult with him not being here. Uh, yes, Ali Peluso. Um, I'd like to re-ask Gary's question about whether or not this is a document that can be made public. And I'd also, my recollection of the new proposed mission statement is that it does not include the word Hutchins in it. And I'm wondering if we're still in breach of contract for this new mission statement <laughs> doesn't have the Hutchins program in and supposedly came about. So can anyone speak to that? Um, I spoke to Patrick. Yeah. Um, I spoke to Patrick Parker after the meeting, and he was under the impression that having adopted this mission statement, whether it includes the words Hutchins plan or not, that that had, com had completed our, our obligations with that contract. And whether that's legitimate or not, that's what he said. Uh, I believe Nate Lefebvre was next. Do we have to keep these words in the mission statement, or can they be removed from the next provision without breaching that contract? Look, uh, it's a matter of interpretation, but it seems to me that, first of all, uh, I don't know whether that. <laughs> Uh, agreement, which consists of an email exchange, uh, not signed by David Shiner, by the way, it was signed by former President Bill Rice. I don't know whether that legally is a contract. Um, 